Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for March 21st, 2021. It is such a blessing to worship with you today. No, that even though we are separated in time and space, the mysterious power of God's Holy Spirit unites us together, one in heart, one in love, one in Christ. Our worship is indeed worship of our one Lord who transcends time and space. And so we also transcend time and space when we bind our hearts together, when we pray for one another, and when we all gather together in whatever means is possible. I'd like to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. It is so much appreciated and would like to announce that our plan is to be worshiping in the sanctuary um, starting with this Sunday, March 21st. And as we approach Easter, please let us know if you intend on, intent, if you intend on attending in person on Easter. Um, if we have a lot of people planning on coming, we will have two services. Um, so let me know. I will be sending out a poll or survey to get a sense of what people are planning. And if we go with two services, I will contact people and ask you to uh, pick a service so that we can all worship together in person in our beloved sanctuary, but safely. Let us now open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your heart, and we thank you for the heart that you give to us that binds us to you and to one another. We pray, Lord, that your spirit lead us and guide us in this time of worship and that our hearts speak our heart's truth, that we love you, lift up our love to you, and that we love one another and show one another through acts of compassion, acts of forgiveness and grace, and acts of love that we are indeed living by the law that you have placed within our hearts, the law of love, love for God and love for neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now sing our opening hymn, Oh, for a heart to praise my God. Now as we come to that time where we lift up to our Lord God, those things that weigh upon our hearts, the fears, the griefs, the trials and tribulations, the struggles, but also the joys and the celebrations, the gratitude and thankfulness. Let us remember today to pray for all those who are sick, 
um, to pray for those who have lost people and are grieving. Pray for all those who care for the sick. And pray for all of us who are so weary from this past year of pandemic. Pray that God give us the strength to not only carry on, but to envision the wonderful plans that God has for us and that our hearts might be filled with hope, for that is God's will for us. Let us also pray for Rita, Janelle, Mike and Lindsay, Michelle, Alan's family, Sandy, Stephen, Brittany, and Grant, Tony, Linda, Tom and Bev, Jim and Judy, Greg, Judy, Don, Susie, Bill, Buddy, Brenda, and Gloria. Let us take all these concerns and everything else that is upon our minds and our hearts to our Lord God in prayer. Loving Father, we thank you so much for the gift of life, for the gift of community, for the gift of love, shown to us so beautifully in your Son, Jesus Christ, and the love that you sustain in us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In this time, Lord, we are beginning to feel hope springing forth in the springtime, not just of the calendar, but the springtime of your church. We pray, Lord, for new growth. We pray for renewed hearts of love. We pray for one another. We pray especially for those who are suffering in this time. We pray, Lord, that the broken relationships might be restored and healed. We pray, Lord, for the suffering and broken lives that might find new wholeness and strength. We pray, Lord, for one another. We pray for our community, and we pray for our world. May your will be done. May we truly know and experience that wherever two or three are gathered together, that you are among us, you are with us. You call us to be your people. Help us, Lord, to follow and help us, Lord, to lead and send us out into the world to share that which we have found. But remind us, Lord, that before we go into the world, we need to live deeply and richly of your grace. And we need to feed upon your word. And we need to learn with one another to care for each other so that we might show the way that you care for us in the world. We thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your sustaining presence. And you thank, we thank you, Lord, that you are always with us. And we thank you for that which you have placed in our hearts, especially the indwelling of your spirit and your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives among us and within us. We give Christ praise. We give Christ our honor and glory. Help us, Lord, to give Christ our whole lives. And so we join our voices together to pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today is from the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us through these ancient words from Jeremiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Speak to our hearts today, Lord. Write upon them that we might know all that you would have us to know, that we might live as you would have us to live, that we we might love as you would have us to love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we continue through our Rend Your Hearts worship series for Lent, we come today to perhaps one of the most significant expressions of the covenant in the entire Old Testament. The prophet Jeremiah was speaking to the people of Jerusalem and Judah in a time of crisis, a time of great difficulty, a time when hope felt like it had been lost, a time when the people were suffering. And yet Jeremiah speaks not only a word of judgment, but a word of hope and promise. For Jeremiah was speaking to the Israelites immediately before the Babylonians would come and destroy Jerusalem and take them off into exile. Jeremiah also spoke to them during their time of exile. And Jeremiah would speak to them about the time after their exile. Jeremiah had many words of warning to the Israelites. In fact, people refer to Jeremiah as the weeping prophet because the word that God gave Jeremiah to give to the people broke Jeremiah's heart. It wasn't the word that Jeremiah wished that he could give but it was the word that God did indeed give. But part of the word that God gave Jeremiah was a word of hope, a word of promise. And our passage today is about the promise that God gave to Jeremiah. He says, the days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. And that it would not be like the previous covenants, like the covenant that God made with Moses when he led the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, into the promised land. Because as we talked about last week, even though the God, that God had done so many mighty acts to save the people, to deliver them from slavery in Egypt, to lead them through the Red Sea, and to sustain them, with manna and water in the wilderness. The people still grumbled. They did not trust God. And the people did not trust their leaders, Moses. And so they repeatedly broke the covenant. They grumbled and complained. They built an idol. And God punished the Israelites in the wilderness. God made them dwell there an entire generation, 40 years, before they could enter the promised land so that their hearts might be prepared to receive what God had promised them. God sent the snakes that we talked about last week to lead the people back to God. And God made a way 
He made the bronze snake that the people could look to when they got bitten by a snake and be healed. And God has given all of us Jesus on the cross that we can look to when all of the snake bites of life trouble us. But yet, Jeremiah's promise that the days are coming when God's law will be put in people's hearts and everybody will know that God is indeed Lord. I think it's pretty clear those days aren't here yet. I've always viewed this this promise from Jeremiah as being about the covenant that Jesus would establish with all humankind. And I believe it is, but we're still living into that covenant. We still don't seem to have God's law in our hearts. We don't have God's law in our minds. And many, many, many people, and sometimes ourselves, don't really seem to know that God is Lord. We still struggle. We still get bitten by the snakes and we still doubt. And we still treat each other with a lack of grace and love. We hold one another accountable to the law as it is written rather than the law that God places in our hearts. And we make many idols out of many things. One of the big idols that I think the pandemic has revealed to us is the idol of safety and security. The idol of normalcy. The idol of having no difficulties and no trials. Because we put our hope in smooth sailing. We put our hope in pleasant days. We put our hope that the world will make sense to us. But when we put our hope in those things, we aren't putting our hope in God. We aren't knowing in our minds and hearts that God is Lord. And we aren't knowing in our minds and hearts the law so intuitively and instinctively that we don't have to think about it. We just live it. Now, Jesus Christ told us what that law is. Love God and love your neighbor. That's difficult to do in the best of times. And sometimes, challenging times, we find that God's spirit wells up with inside of us and we actually live the Christian life of love and grace and mercy, helping one another through our difficulties. But then there are other days and other times when difficult times cause us to stumble. Difficult times can cause us to fear. And difficult times can cause us to grumble. The last year, we have all suffered. We have suffered as individuals. We have suffered as a church. But God's promise is that written in our hearts and implanted in our minds is the way of Christ. The Holy Spirit guides us, and God's law becomes evident because when we look upon one another, as we go through our difficulties and struggle, struggle with the things that come up in our lives and in our world that are difficult, because we ourselves have known struggle and difficulty, have known failure and stumbling, have known what it is to have a grumbling heart. Because we know those things, we can have compassion for each other as we all struggle. Indeed, it has been a difficult time this last year. But God declares to us that the days are coming And I declare to you that the days are coming soon when our experience of pandemic can make us love one another, can help us to forgive one another, and can help teach us to support one another, 
more fully and more truly. Despite our misgivings, despite our failings, despite our stumbling and grumbling. Because God's mercy is absolute. God's gift to us on the cross in Jesus Christ means that we need not fear. We need not even fear sin to separate us from God. Because when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgives them. And we need not fear each other. We need not fear how the other makes our own lives more difficult because the Holy Spirit is giving us power and strength to respond to everything with power, with love, and with grace. Jeremiah declares that they will all know me from the least to the greatest, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That's also part of God's law. Let us work together, pray together, and worship together so that our own wickedness can be forgiven and so that we can forgive the wickedness of those around us and remember each other's sins no more. We pray it in the Lord's Prayer all the time. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But that's easier said in a prayer than prayed in our lives, in our actions, in our attitudes, in our words. One thing the pandemic has certainly taught me is that we need each other desperately. We need God even more. We need the presence of the Spirit. And we need hope. But our hope is not in a vaccine. Our hope is not in the pandemic ending. Our hope is not even in being able to come together and worship in person again. Our hope is in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. And our hope is in the love that Christ shows to us and places in our hearts. If we want to recover from this difficult, difficult year, the answer is not in things getting better in the world. The answer is in things getting better in our own hearts, in our own relationships, in our own relationship with God. If indeed we have struggled, and I know I have, the real struggle hasn't been with isolation or with pandemic or with the difficulties of online worship and a lack of connection to one another. The difficulty has been not trusting that if I look to Christ on the cross, then I need fear nothing. As we read in 1 John, perfect love casts out fear. My love is not perfect, but Christ's love is. That is the law. That is the truth of God. Embrace love. Forgive those around you, and remember their sins no more. Amen. To live the call this week, the fifth week of Lent, let us prepare our minds and our hearts to fully house Welcome in God's law and the truth of God's presence. May we work to know God beyond our own mind, beyond our own heart, with the mind and heart of God in Jesus Christ. Discipleship is how we do that, those practices of discipleship. When we pray, especially praying for our enemies, praying for those that we feel and know and who in reality have harmed us, praying for those who have made decisions in this time of pandemic that we don't agree with, praying for those who feel like they oppose us at every turn, praying for those who have not met our needs, praying for those 
who have made our lives harder and instead thanking God for the blessing of those people, for they teach us to rely on the Lord alone. They teach us to stand on God's grace alone. They teach us to open our hearts to God, to make our hope in God. So pray. Prepare your life by praying for those people who have made your life difficult. Study scripture. Read the stories of people who have struggled. Read the story of Moses, who, because he was slow of tongue, tried to reject God's call upon his life. And God made a way, telling Moses, use your brother, he speaks fine. Or when Moses was having difficulty administering all of the problems and difficulties of the people in the wilderness. God sent his father-in-law Jethro to Moses to tell him, get people to help you. You don't have to lead everybody. Set people over groups of a thousand, of a hundred, of ten, and let them care for one another and just bring the big things to you. If we lived our lives that way, how much more wise would we be? Read the stories of the prophets like Jeremiah and how he was persecuted and suffered. Read the stories of Elijah who also suffered. Elijah suffered depression and went out into the wilderness to die. And God led him up to a mountain and there showed him that in the big things of the world, the earthquake, wind, and fire, that's not where the answer is, but it's the still, small voice of God within. The very still, small voice that Jeremiah is talking about in this passage, written on our hearts and in our minds. And read the stories of Christ's suffering, his disciples' suffering, Paul's suffering. And read how God has sustained every one of them that even death on the cross was not enough to separate Jesus from God's power and God's love, for he was resurrected on that glorious Easter morning. When life seems troublesome this week, and we feel like we are living in a tomb of death, remember that the tomb is empty. The shrouds have been folded and placed to the side and that God has given us new life in Jesus Christ. Let us now pray. Covenant-making God, you desire our freedom, the freedom to serve and to love you and our neighbors with our whole being, with our whole hearts. Through our humility and the rending of our hearts, create in us a new passion for obedience to your ways, and to see all the experiences of freedom that come from serving you. Enable us to see the hurts and pain of others, and enable us not to focus on our own hurts and pain, except so far as they lead us to reach out in healing love to those around us. And in that way, we can be your covenant people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us now sing our closing hymn, Come, Let Us Use the Grace Divine.
as we go forth in this week. Look not to the difficulties of this time to go away, though of course we hope for that and we want that and we pray for that. But look for the presence of God in all of it. Know in your mind and heart that God is our Lord and that the law of love is already implanted within us if we just let the Spirit reign and follow Jesus. So as you go into the world this week, go in the security of God's presence, go in the knowledge of the Son's forgiveness, and go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week. 